2024 is being called the quickening. The quickening is a phrase that refers to two simultaneous occurrences. One refers to the quickening that will be experienced by awakening individuals such as yourself, whether you refer to yourself as a light worker, whether you call yourself an empath, whether you are simply one aligned as the divine I am with no labels needed. For the awakening beings on this planet, for the spirit guides in training, the archangels in training, the ones who know themselves as light, whether it's their experience of light is as consistent as they expect it to be, whether they act the way they think they're supposed to be. The spiritual awakening beings on this planet will be undergoing a quickening. A quickening means a faster acceleration into realities of a higher timeline. This timeline that's called the unity timeline is a new timeline opening up in the quantum field. And it's being made possible because so many of us awakening beings over the last five to seven years have gone through so much purging, so much clearing, so much healing. So many of us have been feeling like we're working around the clock in endless dark night of the soul scenarios, constantly questioning why we seem to have to clear not only for ourselves, but the world. But for five to seven years, a lot of us have been in the trenches. And I've been with you there every step of the way, as I will always do. And we've been doing this grand purging on so many levels to open up space, to clear karmic patterns, which of course a lot of you experienced so miraculously when we did the karma clearing on the recent tour, but we've cleared space and we've cleared out so much density, so much distortion to create space for more of your soul to now move into form. And in doing that work, it is created on a quantum level, an incredible convergence, a convergence that brings many separate timelines to converge in the oneness of bigger timelines. And I'll, I'll explain to you what I mean by that. If we go back in time to when a lot of us started this spiritual journey, maybe you in the beginning of your spiritual journey and the world that you were living in felt like it was in a third dimensional alignment. And so a lot of the information that was being brought to spiritual communities and in teachings were rooted in the third dimension. That's why since I've been teaching, I say I represent the new paradigm because I know my purpose is to help usher in the fifth dimension. So when the world was in a third dimensional alignment, and when we began our spiritual journeys in the third dimension, what tended to happen is we had spiritual experiences that brought us into moments of transcendence, and then it brought us back down to the grit and gravity of our human experiences. We tasted elation, we tasted peace, we tasted interconnection, and then we bounced back into separation, conflict, and all sorts of third dimensional patterning. From an energetic perspective, the last five to seven years, many of us have been bouncing back and forth between two timelines. A timeline of let me focus on what I want to change and resolve in my personal life, or just trying to navigate my human life, maybe as a parent, a co-parent, a student, an employee, a husband, a wife, and then we bounce into another timeline of, I want to focus on my inner work. I want to heal myself. I want, to, I want to anchor light for humanity. And it's almost like being someone who's lived a double life. And you go back and forth between being absorbed in your humanness and absorbed in your spirit. And it feels like you're living a double life. Now, there was a reason that we were living that way because we were, for the last five to seven years, clearing out major levels of 
karma distortion patterning from our upbringing and helping to loosen the grip of attachment for the collective. We have officially cleared enough space to where instead of having a separate human timeline and a separate spiritual timeline, because I think we can all agree, we've all become very exhausted, either being obsessed and absorbed on our spiritual path and doing endless inner work, or being obsessed and dumbfounded with how the people in our lives and the family and the other people around us don't seem to play by the same rules that we have been taught is the way the universe works. And it's created compassion fatigue. It's created tiredness. It's created exhaustion because we have been doing so much evolutionary work over the past five to seven years and feeling like we're living two different lives. And so in this new year, 2024, with which a lot of us are going to start experiencing from this transmission, and some of us have already been experiencing before this transmission, the human timeline and the spiritual timeline now converge into a new timeline called the unity timeline. And what that actually means is that because the earth is more in a fifth dimensional alignment, because we've cleared so much of the third dimensional distortion, because we're still shaking off the fourth dimensional patterning, we have the space and the opportunity and the entry point to move into a timeline where everything that is required of you to be aligned in your divinity, to participate in helping the world ascend, is also simultaneously everything you need to step into the highest timeline of your human experience. It doesn't have to be divided attention anymore. It doesn't have to be endless spiritual work anymore. It doesn't have to be taken on people's energy and constantly clearing your field. This is the rebirth of the divine I am and it will occur on this unity timeline that you are stepping into, because if you weren't meant to already be on it, you wouldn't be here listening to this. And so let me make this clear. When I say entering the unity timeline, I don't want you to worry about what could happen to shake you out of this timeline? Because that would be like the work you've done for the last five to seven years all of a sudden doesn't matter. It always mattered. And for so many of us, we've been doing so much work and thinking, does this matter? It matters. And this is going to be the beginning of the universe showing you how much the work you've done and dedication you've had actually matters. That's really exciting, isn't it? I found that particularly exciting. Now, here's the interesting thing. The quickening refers to those of us in the first wave of ascension, the way showers, the leaders of unity consciousness, experiencing a quickening of greater alignment with the divine I am and a greater capacity to experience your divine I am as reflections in the world around you, not just divinity on the inside to help you cope with all the people around you who use you as an emotional doormat, or to be the divine I am who's like, you know, in a Pac-Man living video game, try to avoid all of the narcissistic ghosts in your life. No, this is where the divine I am takes root in your body and starts manifesting itself outside of you, which is also your single greatest contribution to helping the world fast track ascension. But the quickening, now we want to talk about the quickening from an external point of view, from the collective's viewpoint, because the world needs a lot of interesting alignments in order to get to the level of consciousness that we have been at and we've worked hard to make space to embody. And in 2024, we are going to experiencing the quickening, the quickening of the world's ascension into greater consciousness, which means truths that have been buried are going to be exposed. Greater corruption is going to be revealed. And when I talk about it as a fall of Rome, it's going to be the beginning steps 
of the corporate superpower losing its power. And the question that 2024 is going to answer, and there will be aspects of this next year that will seem intense, but if you allow yourself to be aligned with your divine I am, and you allow yourself to support the world from the unity timeline, I assure you that no matter what happens in the world, you will always be safe. You will always be connected and you will always be guided. And the universe and I will be here to usher that in for all of us. But the question about this quickening, has the grip that the corporate elite has on the world starts to crumble and it's crumbling because the world is becoming harder and harder for people who think they're in control to control. And so it's harder to hold the game together. And again, when I speak about this, I'm not speaking about this as light versus dark. The dark can be against the light. The light is not against the dark. The light is here rescuing the darkness from itself and returning it to the remembrance of its true self. This is a rescue mission. And the more the light has the chance to rescue the darkness, the more we live in a planet where no one is hurt. But in the quickening, the question of next year will be very clear. And that will be, will the last ditch strategies be put into action? to try to gain control of the world? Or will we continue to anchor the divine I am and fast track the world's expansion and move through timelines and aspects of unity timelines for the world so quickly that the grip of control slips away from those who only know greed, hurt, deception, manipulation and coercion. And so there are things that may occur as a last ditch effort for one purpose. And the one purpose is to divide humanity into categories, to make things happen that cause us to take sides and turn against each other. And as long as we don't turn against each other, and as long as we unite and say, we don't have to believe the same things, we can have different interests. You can vote for this side, I can vote for that side. But what we agree on is that all human beings have rights and deserve to be cared for. As long as we unite on a humanitarian level, there is nothing that can be done to pull us apart. And that is what the people who think they're in power are the most afraid of. The quickening of your divine I am into your body, the quickening of moving through the, revel the revelation of Greed, deception, the dissolving of manipulation through the media, and any last ditch effort to try to shock humanity and divide us into victims against each other. But it's not working. Too many of us are waking up. And the time for a very few amount of people to have much and many people to have very little is ending. And so what I invite you to look at in this quickening of 2024, how you can help participate in accelerating the trajectory of ascension for humanity is very simple and it has to be simple because if it's simple, you can allow it to be something you practice as often as you desire. And I'll share it with you, of course. 
The simple practice is whatever you see happening in the world, whatever story you see playing out in the news. And again, what I'm about to say is not a replacement for any type of action you wish to take in the world. I am never someone who is asking you to be a pacifistic spiritual person. I'm simply saying no matter what you are called to do in support of our world, always bring this with you. And it is the awareness that whatever you're seeing playing out in the world, I want you to see two things. One, it is only trying to traumatize and divide us from each other and turn us against each other. And that whatever you see in the world, you have to remember, we are anchoring an ascension. We are watching a world ascend as it moves out of polarity, which means in order to move towards oneness, we have to see the evaporation of separation. And the way you see the evaporation of separation is through conflict. And we are anchoring light so that we don't need as many global wars and conflicts to get us to the other side of peace and unity. And so if in 2024, even beyond, you start seeing unfortunate things in the world. I want you as a light bearer and anchor of light, being able to say to yourself, what I am seeing is actually part of the ascension unfolding. Instead of, there's no way humanity can be ascending when we're this separated or there's this much conflict in the world. Because when we think that way, we're feeding that system. And I'll even share with you how, the, how, how it's going to really break down in the ascension. For the people that think they're in control, that think they understand multidimensional reality, they have one thing that they try to weaponize. And it's also the same thing that's our greatest tool. Do you know what that is? The fourth dimension. Time. If they can enact traumatizing, confusing things in the world, and we turn against each other, one side against another, that slows down the fabric of time, which means it's slowing down the ascension and expansion of consciousness and humanity. And as more and more of us affirm what I'm seeing is actually a part of the ascension, what I'm seeing is actually how conflict is colliding to dissolve separation, to bring an emergence of unity. It's not that what happens in front of you is unimportant. It's that what is happening is inviting more heroes in the world to step forward, not to be in conflict with one another, but to sing and rejoice in the needs of humanity, where our power is used to lift up others instead of push people down. And so when you anchor at what you see, even if you said, I don't know how this is a part of the ascension, but I know this is the dissolving of the old veil, and this is the emergence of unity consciousness. When you tell your consciousness that what you see is a part of the ascension, you're helping to speed up time to allow ascension to dawn for the world faster, which moves us into timelines where people who think they're in control cease to exist. And instead of believing that you're going to live one day to see all of these evil people go to jail like the end of a movie, we're actually going to see in, in certain chunks and amounts, we're going to move into higher timelines where a lot of the resolution of this just withers away. And so what we can do as human beings is no matter what we see, and you, and you have to be honest about it, you can say, you know, because this isn't fake it till you make it. I don't know how what I'm seeing, whether it's global conflict, whether it's, you know, whether it's cyber attacks, whether it's the intentional trying to dissolve the, the, the dollar and move into global currency, whatever anyone tries. I don't know how this is a part of the ascension. 
I only know that this is more evidence that unity is dawning. And if you can allow yourself to, to remind yourself that even when you think you're seeing the opposite, you're actually seeing unity dawning in a world waking up out of polarity. You are helping to use the fabric of time to fast track us into a reality where those who think they're in control don't exist. So I'm not here saying, turn away, don't look at this. I'm not here to say, I'm not here saying two different things. I'm not saying turn away and be spiritual beings and let's just anchor the light and not look at this because it's going to pull us down and suck us in. That's a spiritual idea rooted in fear. I'm also not, I'm also not suggesting watch the news 24 hours a day with no relief. I'm saying, let's just be aware of what is being put out into the world and knowing that everything we see is an opportunity to practice being aligned with the divine I am and saying to ourselves, I may not know how this is a part of the ascension, and yet it is. Because when we all start telling ourselves what we're seeing, we start through osmosis and through energetic alchemy informing the quantum field how we all collectively want the world to be molded. And this brings me to an even greater realization I want to share with you. Because so many of you have experienced me reteaching the laws of attraction. Why did the law of attraction get so popular so many years ago? I'll tell you why. Because in the beginning of the law of attraction, the initiation was you practicing to manifest better things for you yourself personally. And that was when your personal timelines and your spiritual timelines were still separate. And some of us have manifested incredible things and some of us have experienced it with great frustration. But nonetheless, the importance was you got used to the idea that you can manifest whether you think you're good at it or not. It was a concept introduced to you in a very popular way. Now, what was the biggest point of that? It brings us to 2024, the quickening. We only practice manifesting for ourselves personally because the actual reason for the law of attraction is not only to manifest for yourself personally. Personally, manifesting for yourself is a part of initiating yourself into the awareness that you have the power to do it. The greatest reason why we initiate ourselves into the power of the law of attraction is to use the power of the law of attraction to manifest ascension for the world. And what you will find out in 2024, as you deepen yourself into this unity timeline, is that your ability to manifest for the world will start bringing you more tangible evidence far quicker than how hard you worked to manifest things for yourself personally, because the law of attraction, although you can use it to manifest for yourself personally, is actually meant as a tool for you to use as the divine I am manifesting for an awakened humanity. And like I'm reading the comments, for those of, of us that have been confused by the law of attraction this year, throughout the year as I offer the teachings I offer, I will clarify the law of attraction. Tonight, I will teach you a new technique in the law of attraction I haven't taught before. But we use it to support humanity. And because the unity timeline is the convergence of your highest personal timeline and the highest timeline for your spiritual growth, because that's converging, that means everything that you will do for the world to manifest ascension is simultaneously going to bless you with the grace of better living experiences. So you don't have to focus on them as separate things. And for some of us, we've been focusing so much on ourselves, we have yet to realize by focusing the law of attraction on manifesting a better world for humanity, we take the attention off ourselves, which gives the universe time and awareness and open opportunity to manifest better circumstances for you. So again, it's still kind of 
goes into the law of polarity. What I manifest for the world equally blesses me with higher possibilities. And if I only focus on myself, I might find myself seeking better opportunities, but not quite finding them. And so it's quite an irony. It's quite an irony that instead of focusing and obsessing on your personal self and manifesting for that character, by you participating in manifesting ascension for the world, you then reflect back to you whatever blessings and higher experiences that are meant to come to you. And we will all experience in this new year accelerations and synchronicities, the living evidence of miracles. And you will also be moving out of constant spiritual micromanagement of yourself, not trying to control your mind, not trying to keep your emotions in one place or another. Because again, it's the divine I am feeling and thinking. And that changes everything. Because once you affirm it's the divine I am thinking and feeling, you're now in the unity timeline, experiencing your thoughts and your feelings differently. So what I'm saying about 2024 is it's the quickening. The quickening of you beginning to embody your divine I am instead of seeking it, trying to figure it out, or working on it. And you coming into a higher timeline, the unity timeline, allows your personal timeline and spiritual timeline to converge. And as you allow the practice of aligning with your divinity and manifesting for the world to be more of an easy everyday focus, you will be blessed by greater synchronicities, greater evidence of miracles, and the ability for you to be surrounded by those who can reflect your light back instead of reflecting back the conditioning that you've been healing and clearing and processing for the last five to seven years. So this is really a new beginning for all of us. 